Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with another guide for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. This time I'm going to show you how to reach and solve the Lome Sky Labyrinth. In order to access this, you first need to have completed the Lome Labyrinth Island down on the surface. If you have not done that already, go do it, but if you need help, I do have a guide for that linked in the description. The TLDR is that you need to enter the North Akala Beach Cave, get all the way to the end, past the Hinox, and then ascend into the labyrinth and solve it. Okay, for this particular labyrinth, we're gonna be starting on the surface at the Ulri Mountain Skyview Tower in Akala Highlands. Once we launch into the air, we're gonna do a bit of island hopping in order to reach the labyrinth. So we're gonna be using a lot of paraglider, we're gonna be using a Zonai uh, flying machine. So make sure you come stock with a, uh, probably about four batteries, four full batteries, either that or just a lot of Zonai charges to refill your own batteries. Okay, let's do it. Cool. Let's go ahead and launch into the air. And then the labyrinth is taunting us, but that's not where we need to go. Instead, we need to head over here, and we are going to land on this square over here. Like I said, we're going to be doing a lot of gliding, a lot of Zonai device usage, so strap in. All right. Show you where this is on the map. This way you know where to land. It's this island right here in the Akala sky. All right, we have a Zonai flying machine along with some spare batteries. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to attach two more to the corners here. Probably attach all of them if you like, but batteries can weigh you down. So you, know, you don't wanna have to rely on them too much. Screw it, let's do it. Okay. All right. Let's see how this goes. All right. As we lift off, we are going to more or less just fly straight up. We want to reach this island over here. As the batteries start to deplete and pop off, the flying machine will need to be rebalanced. So you can't, I mean, you really kind of can just fly straight, but to minimize the gliding, just in case you're short on stamina, um, you know, you can do this. Uh, what I will tell you is you're gonna need at least two full wheels of stamina in order to reach the uh, one of the islands that we need to use to reach the labyrinth. All right. Once you are over here, you can ditch this flying machine and then head over here. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna attach a propeller to a wing and then we are going to fly this wing to the east. Nope. Yep, all right. Once it's attached, go ahead and give it a bonk. And then you want to basically immediately turn it left and then balance it out once you are facing these islands over here. Okay, just stand near the prop and you should be okay. All right, as you can see, I have about four and a third batteries as well as a bit of reserve from a zone I charge. That is more than enough. Uh, you won't need to use all of that. But just to give you a bit of an idea of, you know, the general range you want to be in. I will say, if you have like three full rings of stamina, you could probably just glide over to it from this spot. Um, but I tried a bunch of times on two and a quarter and just didn't work. All right, so eventually the wing is gonna give out. With that, you could just glide over. Oh God, just let me off. All right, 
cool. Welcome to Sky Mine. So this island is home to a shrine quest that I have a guide for. But for now, we're going to skip all that. And what we're going to do is we're going to get launched up here, and then we're going to come over to this island over here. I do not know how to solve this Korok seed challenge, so if you do, leave a comment. <laughs> okay, so you want to stand on this partic this pillar in particular, and then we are going to paraglide over to this island over here. So to show you on the map where we are, we are on this tiny island right here, and then our destination is this one right here. All right, whenever you're ready, go for it. So just use Tulin on cooldown and glide on over. There will be another flying machine pre-built for us that will get us to the labyrinth from this island. You may get uh, hassled by an Aracuda or two. Uh, the easiest way to dodge those is to just sort of swerve them like slightly left slightly right as they come towards you but you should be able to see them coming so this guy we're just going to swerve left a little bit you don't want to get too far off course because you don't want to run out of stamina oh i haven't been using tooling Two wheels of salmon, like I said. So once you're ready, you can start diving down. Oops. All right. Cool. So on this island will be a flying machine right here. Perfect. So this thing is already completely built. Don't forget this chest over here. It's easily forgotten. Hey, an old map. Nice. Did I already get this one? I actually forgot this map. I forgot to get this chest, by the way. So, there you go. All right. Cool. Old map. Perfect. I have no idea what that leads to. All right. So, this flying machine, believe it or not, is completely set up. It is facing the right direction and everything. It has batteries. So, just sit on it. Oh, you don't really have to do anything for a while. This will just push you in the general direction of the labyrinth. And again, as the batteries pop off, the flying machine will kind of come out of balance a little bit. So you may have to adjust for that, but you should be okay for the most part. So I'm just holding forward on the stick ever so slightly. just to give us a bit more of an aggressive pitch. This way it gets us closer to the labyrinth. And again, I guess I have four and two thirds battery. So yep, you need a lot of battery. This flying machine is quite expensive on battery, but eventually you're gonna hit a low gravity zone and then you can just jump off this thing and bail. Almost there, here we go. Perfect, so a three and a half batteries, three and a quarter. All right, once you land, you can activate the shrine for a checkpoint. I've got a guide for that linked in the description. It's a really fun shrine, one of the most fun they've done. But that's not why we are here. When you're ready, you want to press this switch and then as long as you have completed the labyrinth on the ground, this door will unlock. So the voice says to you who set foot in my labyrinth of the sky, I offer you a test of wisdom. Four terminals are hidden in this maze. Activate them all. Okay, welcome to the low may labyrinth in the sky. So what we're going to do is we're going to just jump in right away and then we're going to go to the middle. So the first switch is in the middle, but before we hit it, actually, sorry, this is a treasure chest. I'm very sorry. 
when we get here, I'm going to show you something on the map. Big old battery. Always useful. Okay. So, before we get started, it's important that we take a look at the map. Now, I have pre-marked the map to show you where the switches are. However, if you were to rely on this map, this one's pretty small. And these gold glowing circles do not show up on the mini-map. So it's important that you mark your own map, either using beacons I actually or stickers. I really don't recommend beacons because if you rely on them, you can kind of get lost if you're just trying to go in the direction of the beacon because the beacon is always present on your mini-map. So I recommend just using stickers. It's a little bit better. Okay, so this one is a bit different than the one in Tabantha Snowfield or uh, the, the Hebra Sky. It's not as straightforward. So what we're gonna do is we are going to start with this uh, switch right here because this one, despite the way this looks, it is isolated. And so we gotta do this one and then we can come back to the center. We'll probably spit out some around here. Come back to the center and then do the other three. So this one right here is only available if you follow the blue line, it's only available starting from over here. So just keep that in mind. All right, so the first one we're gonna do is this one right here. And then I always have to check the map to make sure I'm facing the correct direction, which I am. Very good. All right, so we're gonna go this way. We're just tracing it to make sure it's possible. Yes, okay, good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the blue line on the mini-map. I'm not even going to look at Link. So just follow the blue line. The brown indicates platforms underneath you that you can land on safely. But for the most part, you just wanna follow the blue. The light gray are these sort of solid platforms here. These are good to rest on to get your stamina back if you need it. Okay. So either way we go, it does not matter from here. They all go to the same spot. So when you have these gates, you just wanna fall beneath. Oh, I hit the lip. Fall beneath and then do that. All right, so yes, we should start going backwards now. Yep, very good. Always refer to the map, make sure you're going in the general direction, and you can see the star on my mini-map now, so you know we're very close. Okay, and it's right here. Oops, thought I was gonna take damage. All right, go ahead and activate this switch, and there's three more. All right, three more to go. So we gotta make it back to the center and then go to the right side. So our nearest exit is pretty close. It's right over here. Oh boy. Okay, so I actually got a little lost, so I'm going to uh, stop here and just regroup to show you where we're gonna go, because I did this a second ago and got lost. So we are gonna enter right here. We're gonna enter from this entry right here, and we're gonna go through, up, right, down, and then right here. Right in front of this star, we can actually enter the switch chamber. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do next. Entering here. Around, in. Following the blue line, that's all we're doing. And then we can drop in right here, right in front of the star. Perfect. Okay, so that's two. The last two are a bit faster because they're all on this side. But let's take a look at the map. So. We got this one, so we are gonna go back in 
to literally where we came from. And then we're going to go through this way. And then we're more or less just going to follow the wall until we get to about here. Then we got to dip in a little bit and then we can come right back in. Okay. So that's the plan. So we're going to just jump straight out, turn to the right, turn to the left, turn to the left again. Turning left, turning left, and then just following the wall for the most part. Oops, didn't mean to stop there. Keep on going, follow the blue line. Follow the blue line, follow the blue line. Almost there, you start to see it on the mini-map. For here, we just gotta drop down a little bit. Pop right back up, get some good altitude. Go to the right, and then we can drop right in here. All right, so that's number three. And even though the other one is in the top left corner, we have to access it from the right side. Let's go to the map one more time. So we're here, and then we're gonna drop back in, and then we're gonna we're gonna turn right, going this way. We're gonna turn left to go down a little bit. And then we're gonna sort of snake around here, and then we should be able to cut in right here, and then just go along the wall, okay? Drop down, pop it open, get some altitude. Over here. Very good. Just gonna check real quick. Yep, go this way, whoa. Go this way, north on the compass. Keep going this way. I've gotten stuck on that wall before, so just be careful. And just keep going. Really only one place to go. Just keep following this section. I'm going to stop here just to uh, get my stamina back because I don't want to run out. Okay, keep following this. Keep following the wall. Going straight across the wall. And this is the final switch right here in the corner. Okay, so that's the Labyrinth Solution. Like I said, it's a bit more complicated than the one in Hebra, no doubt. It ends uh, in the same sort of way. A switch comes up on the roof, and then you can just jump anywhere, and you have access to this switch. If you do not want to know what happens next, please stop watching. There is more to this adventure, and like I said in the last one, uh, there's more that is guide-worthy. So, for that reason, I'm going to keep going, but if you don't want to see what happens next, please just subscribe to the channel, leave a comment if this helped. Okay, for those of you who are sticking around for the rest of this, you want to activate this switch, and then the voice will speak to us once more. It says, you who have traversed this maze, mark well my words. I have pulled apart the bars in the labyrinth of the land that obstructed your path below ground. From high above to far below, prove your courage by diving into the depths of the earth. The final way shall be open to you. Okay, before you make this jump, I recommend equipping your strongest armor. And then you want to jump down. So this is not a straight shot. You do need to dive a little bit. Or you do need to back up a little bit. And you know, diving makes this go by a little bit faster. Once you're aligned with the chasm below, you can just go straight in. All right. So this is going to lead to another labyrinth in the depths. Now, you may be thinking, oh my god, I have to navigate a labyrinth in the dark. No. Pick a direction and run in it. They all lead to the same exact place. So just keep following the torches and then go down here. So if you're familiar with that spotlight, 
you know that we are about to fight a boss, and that boss is a flux construct. Highly recommend you throw in a giant bright bloom seed just to illuminate the arena. If you don't have a giant one, throw a bunch of the small ones around, but you definitely want to be able to see what you're doing here. All right, once you're ready, go for it. All right, so the mission here is to find the cube. That is the weak spot. Got it. Attach it, and then just pull it. And if you yank it out, it'll break up. All right, take out a strong weapon. Go to town. It's not bad. Okay, for this phase, you just want to sort of stand still. Once the blocks come down, run out of their way. Jump on one, and then use recall to rewind. And you're going to pop up here, and you'll be able to deal some damage. Oh, God. Oh, there's nothing attached to this weapon. Oh, I'm dumb. <laughs> I was like, why is this doing no damage? Fuse, thank you. Jeez. All right. Time for the cube. Just take out Ultra Hand. Ah, I missed it. Okay, should be able to get on this side. Nope, not on this side. Is it on the left? Oh, God. I really hate this cube. Nope. Oh, wow. That was, that was rough. A little mean. Second one. No? Oh boy. I misjudged that. It's on the left side now. Oh, how dare you, dude? God, this this phase is the worst. I hate this phase so much. Dear Lord. Got it. Wow. All right, back to the robot phase. This to me is the deadliest phase just because of, oh, wow, Tulin actually saved me there just because of how much damage you can do with one teleport. All right, but that's it. That is Flux Construct level three, and then the Labyrinth is complete. So you're gonna get one final switch to press. Go ahead and press that, and then there are treasures littered throughout this uh, Labyrinth. When you press that switch, a specific treasure chest is gonna show up. Make sure to loot that, it has very good treasure. If you're looking for the light route for this place, because obviously it's still dark, the light route is on the roof, so just exit using the stairs behind those bars. Lots of treasure, both inside of the labyrinth and on the outside perimeter on the ground floor. Be sure to grab those, they're very, very helpful to you. But that's it. Okay, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new guides go live. If you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. You can also leave a super thanks by clicking the heart icon below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and join my Discord. The links for those are in the description below. As always, I'll speak Johnny Cage. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.